My name is Will, and I, like Mulder from the X-Files, want to believe. So I've embarked on a journey of discovery. I've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical worlds. I've thrown myself into weird and wonderful experiences. I've even joined a coven of witches, all in the interest of finding something, anything, that will prove that there's something beyond this physical, three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The Skeptic Metaphysician. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. We are excited to be here with you, especially excited to be here with you, Karen. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here too. Yeah, well, you <laughs> you bring a lot of energy to the show that I can't. So when it, you're not here, it's really badly felt. So <laughs> please don't ever leave me again. I'll think about it. <laughs> well, at least that's not a no. <laughs> Karen, today we're going to talk about all kinds of things. Have you heard the term woo well i've heard woohoo but i think you're talking about something different so no <laughs> right well in metaphysical paranormal mystical world the woo is like the the really wow the wild out there the stuff that people who are skeptical who are pragmatic don't typically be believe in mm -hmm. and in fact sometimes is the barrier to people following this type of topic so it's like matter. ooh, but with a w ooh, yeah but ooh. like a mystical woo. Yeah. Follow, we're following the woo. it's like the magical people oh that's that's a whole bunch of woo right? i'm not into that woo kind of thing right well our next guest has a show that's called follow the woo and let me give you the intro because i'm already driving the show into the ground so queer <laughs> empath witch fen obsessed with discussing the magical and the mystical sounds familiar She's apprenticed with gurus, been mentored by shamans, and worked with dozens of healers, sages, and mystics, and, like I mentioned, hosts a podcast called Follow the Woo. Now, in each episode, she follows her intuition wherever it takes her, in and around topics like witchcraft, meditation, the paranormal and supernatural, aliens, and fae encounters, that's a fairies for those that are not initiated, spirituality, gurus, shamanism, all the woo. See where the woo is? I see. And it sounds very interesting. Cool. I'm super excited because these are some of the things that we've not talked about. But to finish her intro, through stories, investigations, interviews, and more, Fen and her guests explore some of life's most unusual and fascinating questions and mysteries. I'm thrilled to welcome Fen to the show. Fen, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I guess the first question <laughs> is, follow the woo, right? Did I explain what the woo is? well enough huh all the hard <laughs> I'm, questions i'm I thinking tell you. that's a no <laughs> <laughs> no you know what i think you did pretty well yeah it, it's it's started as a derogatory term the woo woo you know it's sort of I, I think it's yeah it covers all of those things all of the weird high strangeness is maybe like a synonymous word so then why call your show follow the woo well that's super simple like Nothing is more interesting to me than the high strangeness or the woo. So I, and I naturally follow it anyway. I always have just where, wherever mm -hmm. it leads me. And the podcast sort of just is an extension of the way that I was already living my life. So you consider yourself, let me go back to your bio real quick, an empath witch. Now we know what an empath is. We know what a witch is and put, put them together. We kind of have a pretty good idea of what together that all means but there's a lot of different i guess types of witches right so are you the wiccan witch or are you just like a solitary practitioner witch what like how why do you consider yourself an empath witch empath witch is sort of just like a, a term that i created which a lot of witches do because they're like well what what you know even like a cottage witch or a green witch some of those are a little older but it's basically taking witchcraft is all about like taking your strongest of skills and then smushing it together with your craft so that's where the term empath witch came from but as far as like wiccan versus solitary i started in a wiccan coven actually it's an order so it's many many people in the order and then now I'm doing more solo, solitary work. But what it's interesting, you are in a coven as well? It says in your intro? <laughs> it does. It says that. I actually did join a coven, but I'm no longer part of it. It was a long time ago back in my crazy Miami days. I was... <laughs> <laughs> I joined I joined a coven because I was looking into this like you I was following the woo I wanted to I wanted to believe in the woo and one of the things I did in that search was 
throw myself, I, I, Karen will tell you, I, when I look into something, I throw myself into something. I mean, I throw myself into something, so I don't go at it half-assed. So if I'm going to look into witchcraft and I'm going to, I'm going to join a coven. And that's what I did. So I have a question then. So you joined a coven back in the day. Wait, I'm not the guest. No, I know, but I'm asking. Well, this is actually for both of you. (laughs) So is it like, so now you're not in the coven anymore, but is it like once a witch, always a witch? Or when you leave the coven, are you no longer a witch? Like, are you still a witch? And I haven't known that for all these years. I'd love to hear Fen's answer to that. I think that's a great question. I was just thinking, I I mean, it depends on the person. It depends on if you want to continue to be following the craft and I'm actually curious as well. Do you still consider yourself a witch? Do you still practice the craft? I would say not in its purest sense of the word, the craft. I'm not part of a coven anymore. I don't really do rituals that you associate with witchcraft. I'm more spiritual. Like, how can I explain this? Back in the day when I was exploring all these things, I looked into Buddhism, I looked into Judaism, Christianity. One of the things that just happened to look into was was Wicca. And there's a lot of it that I really loved and enjoyed. But there, it was still some things where I couldn't wrap my head around the whole woo-ness of it all. It just, it was, it just felt like I'm trading one God that I'm worshiping for another. And the whole worshiping thing was difficult for me. So I, instead, I tell people that I'm, I mean, you've heard the term spiritual, but not religious. I'm very much that. I, I mean, the family belongs to a Presbyterian church, but I'm not really consider myself Presbyterian. I am more about inner work and trying to be the best person I can. I explore different avenues of things. Like if we, we actually did talk to a witch on the show and afterwards reached out to her to do a, a working for us, right? We've, we've done that before. So I just follow whatever feels right because at the end of the day, that's what's right for you is not necessarily what's right for someone else. It's just, you got to follow your own path. Yeah, absolutely. And th- let me be clear here too, that like the craft itself is evolving. So there are, and I will be the first to say that, like, there are things that are problematic about Wiccan specifically in general, well, specifically and in general. But like, if you're thinking about witchcraft in general, Wiccan does have some, there are some some problems with it. And I agree with you. I'm spiritual, not religious. And, and when you get hung up on the pantheons in witchcraft, you know, it's like, oh, no, who are we worshiping in this ritual? <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, well, I respect that viewpoint, but it's not necessarily like what I need to be doing every day in my personal magic practice. I don't, I don't need to be calling on some Greek god. In fact, I, I almost always want to leave out the gods and just focus on the goddesses. So that's <laughs> for, for many, many reasons. But yeah, I right. totally know what you mean. So Fen, you've mentioned a couple of times, you asked well if he's still practicing the craft. What, what does that mean, the craft? Because I know nothing. This is one thing that I really know nothing about. Wow, have well, we not talked about this? Not too much, no. Mm. Well, I th- again, witchcraft is always changing, but I think, I mean, the craft is short for witchcraft, but it, mm-hmm. it's just sort of your personal, it can be ceremonial or ritual magic practice. And it's it's so broad, though. It really depends if you're talking about, like, Aleister Crowley people and, like, the Thelemites. That's a totally different brand of the craft versus Wiccan the craft versus solitary practitioners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or or how about just now why can't I think of it? Hereditary witches, right? Who have like a lineage of that, but they don't do anything that's in Wiccan or Thelma or blah you know, all of the different areas. So it's really just your brand of magic is the easiest way to put it. Remember there there was a movie called The Craft back in the day. It was all Such about you know, these, these girls who, who joined or wanted to, to be, who joined their own, I think they created their own coven, I think, but it was great. It was an awesome movie. <laughs> it's a fun uh, one. It's- yeah. Not necessarily seeped in trueness to, for lack of a better word, but, but it was fun. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> or truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to, to me, to me, the craft is like, is like a lifestyle. Or truth. <laughs> trueness, She's you know, making whatever. fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is why we bring Karen on the show. Yeah. Uh, but, but to me, the, the craft is is like the lifestyle, right? It's a it's a type of the way that you live. It's you live the craft in lots yeah. of different lifestyle choices out there. But okay, so then let's. I, what really struck out at me with with your intro that you sent over, uh, your bio is the topics that you cover on the show. Now, having been a part of a coven, we do a lot with 
the fae and spirits and all that kind of stuff. But and and there are people who truly will swear that fairies are real and as are everything of the old Middle Earth type of creature, so to speak. But you've also talked about all kinds of things like aliens and things like that. So what if there was one thing that really j- has jumped out at you through the time that you've done your show, what what has been the most shocking thing that you have discovered? Ooh, there's been a lot. Um, Let's take them one by one. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say the the weirdest, the, the one where like when I got off the call, I was like, oh, wow, I think I need to take a walk <laughs> <laughs> or maybe call my therapist and like move my appointment up. Like I, I, I just was this was, this is a tough one. It, she had told me that she had been abducted by aliens in real time, not, not a mental imprint, which often it's just sort of something that's going on mentally, which is complicated in itself, but it was real time. Like someone came into her actual room and she also told me about her, how she had been impregnated by a number of aliens and had, not one or two alien hybrid human kids, but like dozens of them. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> like she's actually given birth to these alien hybrid babies? Yes. Yeah. Acor- I mean, according to to her, her re- retelling of what happened to her. Are they living with her now or were they taken away? They were taken away. They, she never really was with them. I think they extracted her eggs. Oh, the aliens took him oh, away. So not yeah. she didn't go to the hospital and say, and the doctor goes, "Whoa, you got some weird looking eyes." That is, <laughs> <laughs> no one's that is family picture. <laughs> exactly, exactly. According to the information that I have, yes. So that one just and what was so weird about that one is that she was so. I listen to a lot of. Let me just say, I listen to a lot of people tell me their personal stories. I like to think I'm a little bit of like a paranormal therapist in a way at, at times. I take it very. I do take that seriously. I've learned to take that seriously seriously from from people before me as well who've kind of mentored me in this this realm. So I, I guess I just like I, I try to be really really open minded and sometimes I don't always believe fully what I'm hearing but I believe they believe it. But what was so compelling about this one was that she, my bullshit meter just did not go off at all. It seemed mm-hmm. like she was like this is this is fucked up and it happened to me and I, I've i been keeping it a secret for decades. So that was kind of mushy in my mind for a while, <laughs> as you can imagine. Yeah, that opens up all kinds of doors that probably rational thought doesn't want to open up if that's indeed the truth. That and it would, could be. It, it very well could be. So one of the things that I think longtime listeners will know is that Karen and I are very much of the believe Everything to a certain extent, right? It's it's more about whatever this person is saying, they're saying it because they truly believe it or they have lived it or whatever. So who are we to say that it can't be real? We're, we're, we've talked to people and we actually, we just talked about witchcraft, right? Mm-hmm. And if there's some people that think witchcraft is a bunch of baloney, but you and I who have been in a coven have probably likely seen the results that come from at the actual focus of the energies to get something accomplished. So it is for sure a thing for me, right? If that is real and Reiki is real, which I know for because I'm a practitioner as well, I mean, who am I to say that aliens aren't? So I would assume that you now believe aliens, aliens are among us and the, the whole abduction thing is is true? I believe that aliens are among us. I didn't need her to convince me that. I've been a molder car you know <laughs> from the gate so i have had my own experiences that some would call alien contact experiences some would call fey contact experiences some would call you know having a really weird sleep paralysis experience you know depending on who you talk to so i i've always believed in in the other there's no, mm-hmm. there was no question there, and I, and to to reinforce what you just said, I I agree. I believe first and foremost. The only time that I don't believe my guests is when, and this is actually before they even get on the show. It's like I do pre calls, and if in the pre call they say something that's like, I can I can clearly tell that you're like reading this right now. You know, it's, wow. it's they, they just want to be on the show. It's not really 
And you can, it, there's like three of them that have ever happened and you can weed them out right away. It's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, there have been some, a few people that we, after the, the interview, we've turned it off and gone. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, there are very no. few of them though. Surprisingly. Mm-hmm. Right. It really is. I think mm-hmm. it's interesting because the people we do interview are so knowledgeable, not just about the topic, but about the history and details and other v- areas. So I think that's another way you can weed people out if yeah. they don't really know kind of the background of what they're talking yeah, they, about. They bring a certain amount of cred- credibility with them when they, when they come on for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Right. And people who are just telling their personal experiences, a lot of times, like I said, they've been holding a secret forever. They didn't even, Mm -hmm. my aunt just told me she had an alien contactee experience the other day. And we were like, Aunt Suze, what the (laughs) fuck? She's like in her seventies. We were like, you haven't told anyone. And she was like, well, who was I going to tell? They were all going to think I was crazy. And I'm like that. So that really weeds people out, too. I mean, if they're going to finally say, OK, fine, I'm going to get on a podcast and talk to who knows how many people about this. I'm more inclined to absolutely believe them. I, I get it. <laughs> You're going there, aren't you? Well, no, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going where you think I'm going. But so <laughs> when I was in college, I read a book that freaked the ever loving hell out of me. Is that where I'm going? Is that where, where you're going? OK. All right. Can I guess what it was called? Yeah. Was it about aliens? Yeah. Communion? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that was the one. That was the one. I slept with my light on in my dorm room for two weeks, and my roommate hated me because I would not let him turn the damn light off. When I read that part where that damn thing looked around, peeked around that dresser, and all of a sudden realized he was awake and rushed at him, that was the end of me. That was the end of me. I can't. I'm secretly <laughs> hoping and praying that these things are not real and it's uh, just figments of the imagination because I tell you right now, if I ever wake up and I see an alien coming at me, I'm done. Like I'm uh, <laughs> ascension, whatever you want to call it. I'm no longer on this earth because that, that just freaks the living daylights yeah, out of me. That was a scary book. I read it in high school. Well, I read most of it until my mother took it away because I was sleeping with my bedroom light on. <laughs> she took it you, away. You read it in high school? Wow. Mm-hmm. I actually Almost have it. not read it. I, really? I have not. My mom read it and she was like, this book fucked me up yes. really badly. And she kind of warned us, like, read that at your own risk. And I I sort of, you know, got the cliff notes from her and I was like, you know what? I'm good. I don't think I need to read that. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably so. a smart move. So um, for people who don't know about the book Communion, it was written by Whitley Strieber, who's a prolific writer. Uh, but he actually was having challenges and he went to a therapist who put him under hypnosis. And there's a there's an affidavit at the end of the book from the hypnotherapist saying this is true, true facts. This is all it's all came out as it was written. And it tells of the history that his whole family has been abducted repeatedly over the generations. And through therapy or hypnotherapy, he remembered the times when it happened to him. And these things are not for the faint of heart. Uh, the, the, if if you're ever, I, I am not going to sleep tonight. Just thinking about it now. No, uh, we should read it together. No, we should read it together. We'll be okay with that. You should do it like a trigger warning beforehand, but then like read it on the podcast. Like, whoa, oh. bedtime <laughs> stories. But, yeah, but if, if, I, if I do that, I'm not going to sleep. I don't know if I want that because it's I mean, I, literally, this just th- there's two things that freak the li- living daylights out of me. The first one doesn't freak me out as much anymore because of thanks to the show, and that's that's death. I'm I'm much more comfortable with the fact of death now because of what I've what I've learned over the past thirty something weeks of doing the show. But now, the only things left are demons and aliens. I don't want to mm-hmm. encounter either one, so I'm pretty sure that's why I haven't astral projected because I don't want to encounter something in the in the ether <laughs> that I don't know how the heck to deal with. So. Right. Now, I've decided not to believe in demons and that works for me. <laughs> it's much <laughs> less scary. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a very complex topic. It De- is. Demons. It is. Yeah, we get on that a lot. But on the hypnosis thing, I actually recently had hypnosis. Ooh. At two different sessions. The first both sessions, the first one though was more intense. I was taken back also to an alien lifetime and it freaked the shit out of me whoa, because whoa. I thought we were just doing like a, you know, she, she was just this lady who was offering hypnosis sessions because she's trying to get her hours in to become, you know, pro hypnosis mm-hmm. lady. And <laughs> she was like, okay, 
and so I signed up because I thought, oh, that's so cool. And I get to do this like two and a half, three hour hypnosis. And I, we, she's like, so what do you want to work on? And I said, who knows? It was probably, it was like, I think it was um, career stuff and like making sure I'm, I'm choosing the right place to live long term. I mean, topical shit. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, I don't know how long in because time means nothing when you're under, when you, after you're inducted. It was just full on oh, well, this is where you used to live. And, and I was just like, and then afterward, I don't think she knew how to deal with it. I mean, she just <laughs> was like, she's so like, that we, has never happened to me. It, it brought you back to a life where you were an alien? Yeah, yeah. I, it didn't bring me back to like Whitley where I was abducted. It brought me back to you used to live on this other planet and then you had to migrate to Earth and... Whoa. And it was not fun for you. You know, it's funny because this keeps coming up, right? Like, are, are aliens intrinsically bad, right? Because our our media system is obsessed with they're only bad. But I do think mm-hmm. I was a good alien. I felt that I, <laughs> I, was, I was... The planet that I was on felt very loving. It felt mm. like it was just very peaceful. And that's so, w- why the transition to Earth was so uncomfortable, because here was okay. not peaceful. Right. So you were more ET than Independence Day. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you, it. Yeah. Do you know why you had to transition? Did that come up? The plan, our planet burned for some reason, but it wasn't our fault. It was someone else's, and or something else's, and so we were refugees. This is some effed up shit. Like I had not, I, I again, we were going to focus on the career, the location that I live in. And afterward, we were just kind of like, blank, blank, blank. What just, <laughs> like, I, like I was just as freaked out as she was. And she remember, she's not a pro yet. So she was kind of like looking at notes and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not good. Yeah. So, so. so I've got two topics to talk about. First, the, the first one is maybe not so serious, but in the second one is. So the first one I have to ask, do you have a question, Karen? Well, I did because you got hypnotized a second time. Yeah, no, I'm going to get to it. Thing. Yeah, okay. I'm going to get to it. But, but I, I don't want to <laughs> let this topic go. So first and foremost, I have, I have to ask, are you a big sci-fi fan? Like, do you read a lot of science fiction? No. Okay. No, that actually, it, I'm not. That makes it even better. that, that mm-hmm. you Because the first thought was, well, maybe it's something that you read or something that you saw that maybe stuck with you. But the second thing, Karen, you bring up a really deep, topic that at some point I need to find someone to talk to about it. And that's the whole star seed thing and why, I mean, there's a school of thought out there that says that this incarnation in life, this world that we're in is just one of many that we go through as part of our learning process, but we live on lots of different planets, right? And, and, and in fact, from what I've been told, this is like the hell planet. Like this is the one that we all have <laughs> to go through in order to kind of forge ourselves spiritually because it's so difficult that everywhere else we go is it's much it's a much easier existence and, and but then we talk about star seeds that are actually from people who are living on this planet who didn't originate from this planet i mean it's just all kinds of stuff that we need to talk about but i haven't found the right person yet but i will i will well maybe star seeds are like that lady's babies mm, no i think well possibly but i think in that case the, a star seed is generally someone a being that comes from another planet to uh, help in the evolution of this planet to sort of raise the vibration so it's not as painful it seems right. like whatever the aliens were up to with her they were just like <laughs> let's she's got some some dna we're into so let's make all these little like baby hybrid minions and i don't know what they're doing with them but that 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 seems like they have another mission i don't know if it's like i think that's the topic of of bachelor party four that's coming out <laughs> <Nice. laughs> I mean, they, they could be for other planets you know they could be making these star seeds for other planets. you you know what that's a good point that is a good point that they could be Anything uh, could be as right. far as the woo goes. Right. But <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, follow the woo. But but then there's another school of thought that says that we are actually aliens. We were put on here by aliens, right? That the whole mm-hmm. evolutionary thing isn't isn't really true. That these are our ancestors coming back to to check up on us and things like that. Yeah, hear it all the time. And right around the time that I had this hypnosis session, I went to my acupuncturist and She's a lovely woman I've been seeing for years. And all of a sudden, in the middle of our session, she's just, you know, poking me with little baby needles. And 
all is well, you know, and she just says, she pauses and she looks at me. I have said nothing to her about the hypnosis. She says, you have alien energy here in the room. Come on. <laughs> I, I cannot make this shit up. I, and I was just like, you are kidding me right now. And she's like, no. So she, she just sort of val seemingly validated that experience, but it, it freaked me out. And I don't know about you, Will, and I, and I really, really wanted to ask this. Since I've started this podcast, weird stuff like that has been happening to me almost nonstop. I mean, every t corner I turn, there's another weird thing happening to me. Do you, are you experiencing that? I, you have no idea how much inside me wants to say yes. But <laughs> uh, I was, I just had a, a conversation last night with someone. I, I appeared as a guest on someone else's show and she mentioned to me after we stopped taping that I'm blocked in a pretty big way. There's, there's something inside me that is blocking me, but I know I just want to tell you to eat more fiber. I'm sorry. That's the 12 year old <laughs> in me. <laughs> oh, do you have a blockage? Will? <laughs> how did I not think about that? For God's sake. I know. I was, I was that was good. That's good. But yes, I've, I've been, I've been trying to, to get all the woo in my life as much as possible. The, the, the one thing that's been happening is I'm seeing the number the the 1111 a lot all the time it, it pops up but that's about it apparently because i'm not opening myself up it's not happening to me like it should i guess mm -hmm. and it's something I, I have to look into for sure yeah i mean i'll just say right off the bat that i definitely feel energetically from you that there is sort of a like not a shield because it's not it's not completely it's not like steel but there is something there that that keeps you distant from it. Maybe it's from communion. You're just like, nope, I don't need to go there. <laughs> I would not doubt it. I would not doubt it. But yeah, it's and it's something that that has seeped into my everyday life, not just spiritually, but but physically. I, I do tend to keep people at arm's length, and I don't. I I do know where it comes from, but I I, I need to work on it. It's it's a lot harder than it really. Well, I wanted it, it to be. Yeah, you need but the podcast is probably you need a what. A spiritual roto rooter. Yeah, get in there. She's on fire today, man. But <laughs> but it had to take it, it. It took it took the potty direction to get Karen energized. It's like, so, so. <laughs> I mean, I get it. It's, it's good that you know that about yourself, and that I'm sure this podcast will probably force you to peel back the layers over time because you're just gonna get to topics that are. Yeah. You can't ignore. Well, I think. it's it, it's already happening, right? I'm definitely a different person today than I was when I first started the show. Mm -hmm. But I I think that each interview that comes in the last three or four or five, it's been one step further into the dude. You got to look into yourself. What's going on, right? So I'm, I'm getting the message, universe. You don't have to smack me in the ass anymore but. but who could help you with that i mean i think there'd be someone in all with all the people that you've met and talked to that would be able to maybe guide you yeah. to that or, or there, give you some direction I, there's a couple of people i've thought about and and i do you know i would like to talk to them a little bit further on it but we're not here to talk about me that's true <laughs> <laughs> i know we're like therapizing you will <laughs> right sorry <laughs> i want to hear about the second hypnosis Okay, let's, let's go there. Tell us about the second hypnosis. So the second one was basically to clean up the mess of the first one. Because I thought, well, I don't feel good after this. And I thought you're supposed <laughs> to feel kind of good. So I called up my, my good friend. Well, I met her through the podcast. And I said, I feel like you know a really good hypnotist. And she, this woman is, she specializes in the weird as far as hypnotism. So she has the Dolores Cannon background. So mm. she's familiar with the past life regressions and possibility of other lifetimes and da, 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 da. So I went, and this is again, another three hour session. And that one I started, I, she inducted me in a much healthier way. And I went into lifetimes that were in on this planet. And then at some point, this other being showed up and was not from this planet. And then I had a little bit of an inkling of this other planet that I lived on call and it started with the letter L, but we couldn't get it out. And then, it, but that one wasn't as much about it. That one wasn't as much about the aliens. It was more about the lifetimes here. And that was weird too, because have you guys ever done hypnosis? 
like this? Yeah, I've I've actually Lior Leon, who's uh, studied with Brian K. Weiss, took me through a past life regression, and we recorded it, and I've got it on standby. At some point, I'll release it, but there are some things in there that I'm like, yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm prepared to release it, but once I clean it up, I have promised the audience I'm going to release it at some point. I just haven't done it yet. It's extremely but, vulnerable, right? I mean, it's yeah. you. You go into such a vulnerable state. And I don't know if 100% I allowed myself to go as deeply as vulnerable as I need to be. So I question whether or not it was just me coming up with stuff or if it was a real thing. So at some point, once I get a grip, I'd like to do it again and, and actually allow myself to go as deeply as I, as I can. Because I have much younger, I did go through a hypnotherapy session, not for past life regressions or anything like that. It was more just to uh, this thing called silver mind control which is meant to help you mm -hmm. control your own mind and this hypnotherapist actually brought me into the abyss right where it was i was w w at one with everything at one time and it was just in a deep dark void and it was amazing but i've not found it since but th i think something inside me says i need to find that i need to get back into that in order for me to be able to releases blockage mm. and that and a lot of fiber and oh. <laughs> that and metamucil <laughs> wasn't sponsored skeptic sponsored position by... brought to you by metamucil <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that's really interesting and you brought up brian weiss who it, oh, that book many lives many masters mm -hmm. changed mm -hmm. my whole life and i think that if more people knew if if the average person knew about that book I think they would really think differently about the possibility of past lives. Yep. I really I, do. I agree. I agree. And, and it's, I mean, this guy's a psychiatrist. This is not, this is not a, a wooer, right? This guy's a scientist. This is, he was shocked by his findings. Mm -hmm. People were talking in different languages that they, they did not know in this lifetime. Uh, I mean, they knew things that were verifiable. There's all this stuff that there's really, like you said, there's no doubt if you read it, what it is. And there's a few mm -hmm. books like that that I found. Some are questionable, some of them are not, uh, but Brian Weiss's book, Many, Many Lives, Many Masters, is was one of the first books I picked up in, in my first, when I started going down this path. But then I started picking up things like Dan Millman books, like The Way of the Peaceful Warrior and Celestine Prophecy by Redmond. And, and now my big thing is, you know, the Wayne Dyer books, like 10 Secrets mm -hmm. to Success and Inner Peace and Conversations with God. Mm -hmm. And for so long, I fought with that term god if the conversations with god it's got to be about god religion and i just wasn't into it but then when i picked it up i realized it was not that at all suddenly it changed my life it was it was mm -hmm. amazing neil donald walsh right yep yep neil donald walsh his he had a conversations with god for teenagers book and i too had trouble with the term god I still kind of do sometimes, but I'm, I'm getting better with it. And I had one of my like earliest sleep paralysis experiences after I read that book. It was like I had some kind of download and I just knew that the stuff that he was saying was was real, was true, I guess is a better term. And that that and the Celestine Prophecy was really what spurred this when I, I read Celestine Prophecy when I was like 15 or something. And, I, I you know, the mind was like... <laughs> Because back right. then that was that was like a really it was there weren't as many books like that i guess or well the new age movement was happening mm -hmm. in the 80s so maybe there were but it wasn't that one became sort of strangely mainstream it did yeah but then then you you go back even further to the 70s during the carlos castaneda books and um yeah. what richard bach right uh Ooh. one which oh, was yeah. one of my absolute <laughs> favorite books but, i love richard bach yeah yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot behind this whole movement, but I think, I don't know, do you feel that there's an acceleration going on? Do you see more and more people turning onto this kind of stuff? Do you think the veil is thinning? What, what, what are your thoughts on this stuff? Short answer is yes, across the board. I think the veil is thinning. I think that people are awakening. I feel like we're at this really interesting binary moment right where, where this planet is binary it's that's what probably makes it what you were referring to earlier is like this is the hell planet it's because it's so polarizing and i think at the same time right before something shifts like evolutionarily speaking there is that that tension between the two extremes and so i think we're seeing this extreme 
shit show on this planet. And then at the same time, more people than I've ever seen before interested in the woo, the, um, the I'll use that umbrella term. Right. And I think people are starting to ask questions. They're starting to investigate the interior of themselves more, I'll say. And I think that's really exciting. And I think when I talk to people who work with ghosts on a regular basis, you know, like that's just a Tuesday for them. They <laughs> tell me, <laughs> you know, I don't experience that. But when I talk to them directly and I trust them, they say, usually the ghosts go back after Samhain, after Halloween. They stay around for a while, but then the veil kind of closes back up. And they've been telling me that it's they're not going back. They just keep staying through spring and summer and fall. And so they're all kind of confused and chaotic. And it's all part of this process of of whatever transformation or evolution we're going through. Wow. Okay. So you just said something that, that really struck a chord. Back in the, I don't know when, when Halloween or Samhain, I mean, Samhain is much older than Halloween, but when Halloween was originally developed, right, where you go out trick-or-treating and all that kind of stuff, and uh, the whole thing was that this was the time of year that the veil is the thinnest, this is when the um, spirits are the closest to us, where we can actually reach out to them, we, talk, we can talk to them, vice versa, that kind of thing. But then then the veil would, would close and and we'd be left alone for the rest of the year. But I never imagined or thought about what you just said, which is that perhaps that was the case back then. But now as the veil thins, Halloween is becomes year long. I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit more about the other stuff you've talked about on your show. Like I'm really curious about fae, the Fae. What, what kinds of experiences have you run into with things like that? Well, I haven't had, oh, this is a complicated answer, right? Because I've had experiences, but I don't know if they are fae or if they're aliens or if they're cryptids. And there's so many people, I would call them experts in the each of those fields who are starting to say, and this is relatively new as far as many people believing it, that maybe they're all the same. Maybe it's not the aliens are different from the Fae and the cryptids are different from the, you know, it, maybe they're all kind of from the same. I don't know. Is the, <laughs> I don't know where they're <laughs> from. But so I have had weird experiences that are indescribable. There's one in particular where I was just recently in Pennsylvania investigating with a friend and he took us to the secret place. He's a, he's a paranormal investigator and he has a podcast. And we were in the woods and apparently there's a lot of paranormal activity in this spot. And we kind of, I don't know, it's hard to tell because what you see on paranormal shows is that they always find something. The reality is when you go on paranormal investigations, you almost always never, almost always never find anything. <laughs> you know, I mean, like you really don't. So I didn't expect anything. And, and we experienced these blue and, and red orbs that just sort of kept popping in and out of the trees. And I, you can't, cannot describe i mean you so, can't explain it i guess not on a i've seen these orbs on photographs and things like that you're talking about in in just with your naked eye orbs just popping up out of the trees naked eye where the, there's one two three four of us standing there and we're all kind of trying to validate the other's experience and we're all like yep i see it it's right there now it's there now it's there and this place is notorious for this kind of weird activity. Pennsylvania is fucking weird in general. So <laughs> that's true. A whole yeah, state so you have is to say haunted. Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that and and they kind of they're the guys that we went with, they were thinking that that's that's sort of a fey thing, that that blue light, I can't remember what it's called right now, but many people in the south and Kentucky, those regions are told if you see a blue light in the woods like that, you absolutely never follow it because that's the Fae trying to trick you to go do whatever. I don't know, something nefarious. So what kind of feeling did you get when you saw that? Like, was it like a creepy vibe or just kind of calm and peaceful? Neither. It was actually the weirdest thing. I felt like I was sort of being lulled to sleep almost. We, I specifically got really tired and I was kind of like, wow, that's neat. And I had to snap myself out of it. And I was like, well, I'm looking at orbs right now. Why do I feel so sleepy? <laughs> wow. So we, yeah, we had some weird experiences that night for sure. And it could have been Faye. 
but the Fae specifically is an area that I haven't covered a lot on the podcast yet. And I'm actually, in a few weeks, I'm going to have a Fae expert. She's one of the most leading experts in the world on fairies. Oh, wow. And I'm so excited to ask her every question in the world about fairies. So we'll see. Yeah, I, uh, I, there's a lot there. I will be listening in. I look forward to listening to that. All right. Well, I, I feel like we could talk forever because yeah. we have so many different topics that we can we can chat and you've got a re really fun way of explaining things and i i mean literally i would sit here with a beer and just talk to you all night long the show's called follow the woo podcast if someone wanted to listen in or reach out to you what's the best way for them to do that you can listen to the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts itunes i mean liter literally any of the platforms it's on and then if you want to, if anybody wants to reach out to me about their personal experiences, you can email me directly at followthewoo at gmail.com. And I get the coolest emails about the weirdest shit all the time. So <laughs> if awesome. you think it's weird, it's not that weird. Prom I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Do you read some of these on the air sometimes? I don't. I try to, I had, I had never even thought of that. I guess mostly because I try to keep things like as confidential just right. as they'd like in the beginning, at least. Right. But I guess I could do that oh, if they I, said it was take, okay. Get permission, and I'd be curious to hear some of them myself. Dear Fen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I a saw. new column in the Times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, Fen, th thanks so much for taking the time and, and talking to us about your, your show and all your experiences. I'd love to love to stay in touch and see how else we could we could mess the world up. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And I agree. If you would like some time to to do a Zoom and and you know have a beer and talk about weird shit, just let me know because that's my favorite thing to do. So yeah. that would be fun. Mine too. Cool. All right. Well, that well, thanks again. And Karen, thank you so much for coming on the show again. Oh, this yeah, great. Karen. Great job. You're the best. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see a, a new show coming out of this at some point. <laughs> uh, and, and listener, I want to thank you too for coming along on this journey of discovery with us. Love to continue our conversation with you on Facebook and Instagram. So feel free to find us there under at Skeptic Metaphysician, or you can always go to skepticmetaphysician.com where you can find all of our direct links not only to our social media platforms and to those of our guests, but where you can also subscribe to the show directly, or you can leave us a review or a voicemail directly on the site. And like Fen, we will keep it anonymous if that is what you prefer. As always, if you know someone that would benefit from hearing the messages we've shared on this show or any of our others, I hope you consider sharing us with that person. It can only help grow the show and it might just help someone else come to terms with the fact that we're so much more than just this three-dimensional body that we inhabit. Now, if you miss any of our show today, if you're listening to this on the radio and are curious about this or any of our other episodes, you can find them all on our website, skepticmetaphysician.com. And there you can also become a member of the community and enjoy added benefits of discounts and services from some of our past guests right there on the site. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I have, Karen, because I had a ton of fun. Sadly, that's all we have for now. But thanks again for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode of The Skeptic Metaphysician. Until then, take care.